Hi fellow web flowers. Welcome to the third part of this multi-part tutorial where we are going to build this entire website. But for now in this third part, we are concentrating on this uh, menu. So we just have a hamburger button and we click and then this um, full page menu collapse. So without further ado, let's jump on my screen and I'll show you how we built it. So here you can see that we have our standard page setup. We have a body with the class of body and um, then we have a normal diff that has the class page wrapper. And uh, here we have our global styles with um, a bunch of custom CSS. As mentioned in the last video, most of this uh, custom CSS comes um, together with ADX flow and uh, it is a kind of utility classes you can use in all your projects, but um, also if we have some um, uh, some some specific uh, CSS that we need custom CSS for, uh, we are going to put it into this file. And uh, yeah, one of the most important things here is the settings for the font sizes. Um, if this is the first video you are what you are watching, go back to the um, previous video. Um, I talk about uh, this font size settings and how you can use them and where uh, you get them from. Um, so, but for now, let's start with the navigation. We choose the main wrapper. We just add a um, standard navigation. Um, we give it a class of nav, and let's see what Webflow gives us within uh, the standard nav, it gives us a container, but um, actually most of the time I've experienced that this container element um, doesn't work. So uh, we simply replace it with a, um, not with a container. So that's the um, container element. Uh, we replace it with a div and uh, we give this div uh, class of nav wrap and also so that it works like our container we give it a container called 12 so now it has the exact same sizing um, like the container i'm using on this website and I just just move everything from here into this new wrap and we can delete the old container. So here we go. Um, then let's rename everything. This is going to be the logo link. And uh, within there we need a, we will need the, the logo file. I will use an embed for that so I can uh, place some SVG code in there. And that's the nav logo. Okay, I will add this um, later. And the next one is the um, nav, we call that one nav inner. And you can see here we have all the um, nav links. But if we Go back to the design. You can see, um, yeah, here's the logo and here's the hamburger icon, like a um, custom icon. And um, here's one single link, a, a call to action. So these two elements, they will um, be the childs of the nav inner. So we will have one nav link here and um, within this nav link, uh, we are going to move the, uh, within the nav inner, we will um, move the uh, hamburger icon and we are going to call this nav menu. Okay, cool. Um, within there, we can replace the icon because um, if we look again at the design, we will have a custom icon here and here's some text and um, so let's build this, the structure for that too. Uh, let's give it another diff, um, call this one nav hem. And uh, within there, we will place a lottie file. 
So let's choose a Lottie. This will be the, the icon because the icon um, will have an uh, animation on click. Um, let's call this one ham icon. And also we need a text field, uh, text block, and let's call this um, nav, nav link. Yeah, nav link. Cool. Um, okay, so now we have the basic structure of the um, main navigation. Let's um, fill it with everything we need. So let's start with the logo. Um, I just select the logo here for, uh, in Figma. I right click on it. And here you can make copy, paste as, copy as SVG. And yeah, here is the embed field. Let's open it and paste the, the code. I get um, rid of this uh, width and height because if I set it here, the width and height, I can, um, yeah, I can I can manipulate the width and the height, uh, but I can't manipulate the width and the height if uh, this width and height is still uh, in the SVG code. So let's delete it and uh, save and close. And you can see the class was already existing, so it has a width of 12 em and a height of 2.5 em. Um, on a on a SVG, if you have a SVG and an embed code, it's necessary to also give it a height. Um, it's a little bit different than uh, than an image. Or if you uh, if you choose a as integ to integrate a SVG with an image tag, because if I get rid of that, you can see um, I have like a little padding here, and I I don't want that because then it's not aligned anymore uh, with the with the text. So. Um, that's why I give it a height of 2.5 EM. I use EM instead of RAM here because I, I want to scale it. Uh, I want that it shrinks or gets bigger according to the viewport size. Um, yeah, here's a color set, but actually we don't need the color to be set. Um, here's a transition. That's fine. We will need the transition later to make the logo smaller on, on scroll. So um, I've chosen all properties, but uh, to be precise, we can also choose width. And yeah, a duration of 400 milliseconds and the easing of ease is totally fine here. So, um, Let's change the text. So we had here um, book a demo and we had here some menu and I can see this has uh, not the right class name. It's also the class name navlink. So um, navlink, you can see I gave the navlink class a padding of 1 EM top and bottom and 1.5 EM um, left and right. So the user, uh, the user has a little bit um, space to click on and um, he doesn't need to uh, click on the text exactly. He can, he can also click like here. So that's a little bit comfort for the user to give them a better usability of the website. Um, yeah, and it has the font uh, clash display and uh, this is the font size. This font size um, is defined with REM because I don't want to shrink it too much. And I also want to give the user um, the ability to increase the font size uh, in terms of accessibility. Exactly. Um, that's it actually. Let's have a look at the Lottie file for the hamburger icon. So I've already uploaded the Lottie icon Let's choose it here from the assets and here we go. Uh, you can see that the um, spacing is still a little bit too much here. Um, it comes from uh, the, the navlink class. So um, I've prepared some combo classes here. Is ham, this is ham class is deleting the um, padding left and right from the navlink class, but it's um, make sure that we still have the same copy settings. 
So um, that's fine because the 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 button the or the area the user can click is uh, this entire um, nav menu item. So that's what you see right now. So everything is fine. So cool. And um, yeah, that's already the navigation for desktop. And the next thing we are going to build is um, the, the full screen navigation that appears when you click on this um, hamburger icon. So according to the design, uh, this one here. So for this, we are going to add a new element uh, to the nav inner. Um, let's call it, let's make a diff and call it nav page. I think there's already a class existing. Yeah, yeah, I already have a class nav page. Um, so what happens with that class? First of all, it's um, on display hidden, but we don't need that right now. We will need that later once we are um, ready with it. Um, so we can leave it like that and the Next thing we are going to need, we need a grid inside there. So I decided to build this with a grid. Um, let's take a grid and let's call it nav grid. Here we go. Um, this grid has the following sections. It has three columns. Um, the first column has one fraction. The second column has 1.5 fractions and the third column has one fraction. Um, I have zero gap for columns and rows and we only have one row so far. Um, okay, and within this nav grid, uh, we will have um, three columns. So let's add another um, div to them. Let's call it nav call. Here we go. And you can see they are now adding the blue background because um, the most obvious thing is they have here the uh, background color light blue 100. That's uh, one of the main colors I've chosen for this project. Then it's set to display flex. Um, the direction is vertical. The alignment is um, start and justify uh, center. Exactly. And I've also defined some padding here, 3.5 EM for left and right. Again, I've chosen EM so it scales better according to the uh, viewport size of the uh, website. And it has a width and height of 100%. Um, let's copy that two more times to um, fill the entire space. And okay, next step is that we uh, need to add the content of the nav page. Um, you can see we have here two lists and yeah, let's start with them. So the first column is uh, actually just a spacer. Uh, so we jump to the second uh, column here and um, let's start with the wrapper. So let's add a div and call it nav list, uh, nav list wrap. We already have it here. Um, yeah, this class is only display flex. It has direction vertical, align left and um, we have a gap for the rows of 4EM and within there we um, put a, another div, it's the nav list and now we need this uh, title here. So let's add a text block and call it uh, nav title. Here we go. Um, my stone, and yeah, then we need the uh, this this links here. Um, we add a text link, and we give this link a nav list. Oh, the wrong one. Nav list link. Um, so the first one is about, the second one is culture, and the third one is block. Okay. Okay, here we go. And 
here. Let's have a look at the class nav title. Um, we have zero margins here and oops, uh, we've defined a height of 2.3.75 em. Um, that means 2.375 times 16, that means um, 38 pixels. Yes, 38 pixels and a height of uh, 1.2. And actually this class is not, uh, this setting is not necessary. And um, yeah, we have a letter spacing here, a little bit more letter spacing that, that directly comes from the body. Um, that's totally fine. And then we have this nav list link uh, class. It gives this item a size of 1.5 EM and a height of 1.7 EM, uh, no, uh, um, percentage. That's actually the same like percentage. And um, yeah, it defines here the, the color cream 100 and that's it. And in general, the, the nav list item, it is, um, again, it's flex and vertical and I gave it a row of 0.5 EM. You can see I can bump it up here or decrease it, doesn't matter. So let's copy that one. Okay, copy. Now, so that's the second item um, we need here, this product list. And you can see that the nav list wrap is also set to flex, vertical, um, align left, uh, justify start, and has a gap of 4 EM that makes this uh, spacing here. You can see I can, um, increase it or decrease it, doesn't matter. But if we take four, it matches the design and the copy is product. Four creatives. Four developers or agencies. Actually, that needs to be small. Um, yeah, I got rid of this arrow here. Um, I can't remember the reason, <laughs> there was a reason. Uh, so I don't try to uh, edit again. Um, and you can see here's also now the social media icons. Um, they are in the third column. So let's add them. So next thing we're going to add is the social icons. Uh, let's have a look at the design again. You can see we have here a bunch of social icons um, and they will be in the third column. So let's start with that. Choose the third column and uh, let's start with the div. Um, social icons wrap. And you can see this class is again, display flex, vertical, align left, justify um, end and we have a gap for the rows of 1 EM. So um, this will make the spacing between the icons. And um, yeah, I've also given it a height of 30 EM. Um, I will show you in a second um, why. So let's add some link blocks and call them uh, social icon. And let's add an image here. or actually let's choose a embed because uh, later on I want to animate the icons color on hover. Yeah, um, I go back to the design and I again copy the SVG code. I choose the, um, yeah, this uh, frame with the icon, it's called icon YouTube and so on. Right click on, click on it, copy SVG. I paste it in here. I get rid of the uh, width and height because I um, want to set the width and height uh, within Webflow. So let's get rid of that. And I also uh, want to, I'm going to replace this fill color here with, uh, with current color. So um, we can also set the color within Webflow and I delete this fill none because uh, I don't know, some, sometimes this can um, interfere. So 
save close here's the icon um, so uh, this is going to be social icon it has 3m because uh, 48 divided by 16 is 3m that's fine um, I don't need to set a height here but I could if I want to and because we replaced the fill color code uh, with current color you can set the color here but uh, be careful it's not the background color it's the um, font color so you can choose now any color here and um, the icon gets this color pretty awesome and you can also um, animate it on hover for example and for this we have a transition here on the color um, so you can see when I hover over it it gets yellow and that's why if you choose the state hover here uh, you can see I've defined um, yellow here as the font color and that in combination um, makes the icon yellow when you hover over it uh, one thing I see that I've missed um, I'm going to set the cursor here to pointer um, that also tells the user uh, that changes the pointer once you um, the mouse enters and leaves you can see yeah um, the same I actually did for this uh, nav list link uh, you can see it, it also oh actually it doesn't um, but then let's do it let's give it a transition uh, on the type font color here um, I choose 400 milliseconds ease is fine and now let's choose hover and let's set the font color to yellow okay cool so now if i hover over you can see they get yellow as well as the icon so let's place all the other icons um, I'm going to make that quickly so you don't need to uh, watch them all. A few moments later. Okay, fine. Uh, so now you can see I've um, placed all these icons and I went into each SVG code and uh, deleted the settings for width and height and replaced the fill color code with current color. And sometimes like on icons on social, like on this uh, Instagram icon, you have to do, um, you have to replace the color code on um, several places. Like uh, for example, here, you can see here, here's one color, uh, one current color, and here's another current color. That's why, uh, yeah, this, this icon has two rings and that's it so far. So now let's um, have a look how this um, navigation will respond. And at the end, we will take care about the animation. So uh, one thing I forgot to mention is um, about this social icons uh, wrap. Um, it was set to justify end and it has a height of 30 m. It is because uh, you can see I want Though the last icon to be on one height uh, with this last um, uh, link link item, and yeah, maybe there are better ways, but I've solved it that way. Um, because of the height, you can see it stays there where it um, is supposed to stay. Um, so on one height with um, four agencies, and. Yeah, let's make the thing responsive. You can see it already responses quite fine. You can see, mm, okay, now maybe it's still okay, but um, here you can see we run into trouble. Um, it's clearly too far down. So um, what I'm going to do is I give this nav calls um, a combo class. Um, yeah, I've already prepared them. This is is left, this is is center, and this is is right. And what they are going to do is, um, this is going to hide the is left um, from from here on. You can see now it's uh, display hidden, 
and the other ones um, we have I've changed nothing here and I've also changed nothing here but um, I made a I made a change to the grid actually um, the grid is now set to uh, one columns and two rows and the first row has a height of three fractions and the second row has a height of one fraction exactly so instead of um, three uh, columns here um, now you can see it uh, three columns here uh, we have one column and two rows now so that's the difference and you can see now it looks fine and also here it looks also fine and that's already how I made this um, navigation responsive. You can also see um, here I have this nav titles and here they are um, they are hidden. And it's because on smaller screens they took too much space and actually they are not necessary because they are not clickable and um, the navigation and the UI and the UX works also without it. That's why I decided to hide them and I just did it with um, um, display none here on on mobile that's it and the social icon wrap uh, you can see here it's um, direction vertical and pretty easy here it's direction horizontal and I've also changed it to justify um, what's it called actually space between and I also uh, give the columns a gap of 16. Let's make it 1EM, then it scales better. And yeah, with 100% height auto. And that's it actually. So now we have our uh, navigation already responsive. Um, if you do it the right way, it goes pretty quick. And I, But you can see once the navigation is open, you can see that this, uh, that you can't see the logo anymore. And um, let's take care about this um, within the uh, logo animation. So to create the animation, the first thing we need to do is we have to hide this nav page because um, the user is not supposed to see it by default. So we choose the nav page here and uh, we go to the display settings and we turn it back to uh, none. So, and then we want the animation to happen uh, when the user clicks here on the nav um, menu or nav hem. So let's choose uh, one of those. Let's choose nav menu um, and let's create an animation. The element trigger is a mouse click or a tap. And on first uh, click, we want to start an animation. Um, I've already prepared it. It's nav open. And on second click, we also want to start an animation and it's a nav close. So let's have a, a detailed uh, look at both animations. So the first thing you can see is um, we are actually turning the nav page item. So uh, this one um, again to uh, display none. Uh, we do this twice. Uh, we do that once with the CSS and we do it uh, here in the animation again because it's necessary um, uh, when we open and close the navigation. Um, the default, we have to set the default here as well. So um, yeah, we do it on, on height and display none. And the next thing is that we are moving the nav calls. And by the way, all of this um, items are set to initial state. So next thing we do is uh, we move the uh, nav calls um, on the epsilon epsilon axis. I think it's called like that. Sorry if I'm wrong. Uh, we call it, uh, we we move it by minus hundred viewport viewport height. Um, you actually now you can't see it because it's um, it's on on hidden, but. Uh, what happens on minus 100 viewport height is that I'm uh, that we are moving them up out of the uh, viewport to the top. So we do that with all three separately. And on the hamburger icon, so this one here, 
we trigger the, uh, the Lottie animation. We want to start it at 25% because it will go quicker. Like here. Ah, no, it starts at 25% because um, at first I thought I want two animations. Uh, at first I thought that on hover I want an animation like this one, that the line gets uh, drawn like this. And then on, on click, I want the second part of the animation. But I tried it before and it didn't really work out. So that's why, and I didn't change the Lottie file because um, I was too lazy and it's not necessary. We can just start here at 25%, that's totally fine. And um, yeah, next thing is that for this nav page, here we uh, turn it to uh, display uh, block. Actually, before I had it to display flex, but doesn't matter in this case if it's um, flex or block. So we turn it to display block, so it gets visible. Next thing is that we um, move the first column, so the left column, again on the on this axis um, to zero uh, viewport height. So actually to its initial state. Next thing is that we change the um, text color of the nav logo. That's why I've used it, uh, used an embed field and pasted the SVG code in there. Because uh, as you can see, I want to turn the, the text color um, to this um, salmon color code uh, before this black and or almost black, very dark blue. And it's not that visible on this blue background. So we turn it into uh, this color and um, Next thing is that we are playing the Lottie file. Um, we give it a duration of 0 0.5 seconds and we play it until 75% because 75% you can see that's where actually the transformation uh, to the cross is finished like this. If you now turn it uh, to 100, it will turn back. So, oops, Let's turn it to 75. And then we move on with the second column. And you will see this goes pretty quick. Uh, so it appear, it, it, it seems to happen pretty much at the same time. I will, I will um, talk about the uh, delay and duration once we went uh, through it. And so the next part is that we move the second uh, column into the viewport. So we um, set it here to zero uh, viewport height. That's the um, initial state actually. And we do it as well with the um, third column. And at last we change the color of the nav link as well, because you can see here's this dark blue or almost black and uh, you can't read it anymore. So we turn it to um, the salmon color. And uh, actually we did the same here, but uh, I wonder why it's not visible. Um, it's not visible. So actually let's, uh, let's just delete it. Maybe we don't need it here. So, um, okay, so let's play the animation once. We can see it happens pretty quick. Have a look at the at the uh, logo, how it changes the color. It changes the color at the moment um, where the first column passes it, passes it. Um, as well as here, you can see the, the Lottie plays and the um, color change happens once the third column um, gets into the viewport. So again, all of uh, these here, they are initial state. So actually there's nothing with duration and timing. Uh, when it's initial state, you have no settings for um, timing and duration or delay and duration. But um, here, this is the first one that is not initial state, but that's a hide and show option. Um, actually, uh, the duration doesn't work here. You can see it here, but you can't click into it uh, because there's no transition between 
uh, display block and display flex or something like this. If, if you want to have a transition here, it's probably on the opacity. Uh, so you wouldn't uh, use a hide and show, um, you would use a opacity instead. So there's no duration settings uh, available for this here. Um, but now here for nav call, this is the first one. So we don't have a delay. I give it a duration of 0 0.3 seconds and I've choosed um, the ease out expo. So out expo, that's the easing I've used because um, it starts pretty fast and um, breaks down at the end and um, stops pretty slowly. Let's play it here again. You can see it's pretty fast at the beginning and at the end it takes a pretty long time. So it's a very organic uh, easing. I love it. I use it all the time. Um, it's my favorite. Yeah. So next one is the uh, nav logo. Uh, you can see it has no delay. It happens at the same time. Uh, but the duration is 0 0.1 uh, because it should change at the uh, beginning. So at the moment where this column passes this, the logo, the color should change. So um, this is roundabout at 0 0.1 um, seconds. Let's have a look again. You can see it's not 100% perfect, but um, Uh, it happens so fast that you actually can't see the uh, notice the difference. Um, the next one is the logo. The logo also starts with a delay of uh, zero seconds and has a duration of 0 0.5. Um, have a look again. You can see it opens pretty quickly. Um, and it's placed here because also, uh, even though um, the nav, this uh, uh, the, the 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 second nav call and the third nav call, they have a duration of 1.3 seconds. Um, the Lottie fly uh, Lottie file has to play at the beginning, so at the be when when this third column gets into the viewport. So it has to happen um, actually before it in the timeline, because uh, this animation takes much more time. Um, then you can see here the, the second column. It starts to move with a delay of 0 0.15 seconds um, and has a again a duration of 1.3 and I've used uh, out expo. Um, it's a little trick to use uh, delays like this little delays like uh, 0 0.1.5 uh, between elements because a movement uh, of different elements uh, gets very organic if you have a little delay within it. You can see it. You can obviously see there's a delay, but it looks organic. Yeah. And um, yeah, the same for the third column. You can see it's a delay of 0 0.3 seconds. So just um, the double the uh, one, uh, 0, 1.5. And yeah, the text color also happens, it happens at the same time as um, nav call um, three comes in, um, but also on a delay of 0 0.3 seconds, but it only takes um, 0 0.1 seconds. So again, it happens very fast. Um, so it is happens at the beginning when the nav call passes uh, the text. Let's play one more time. You can see beautiful animation. Um, it also works on desktop on tablet as well as on, on mobile. You can see we only have the uh, icon left over here. Uh, we don't have the, um, the text next to it. Yeah. So let's have a look at the closing animation as well. So here we have the closing animation and actually we are just reversing uh, what happens in the open animation, but uh, usually I do it a little bit quicker because, um, yeah, in my experience, closing animations of navigations or sub menus um, should happen faster. So what we are doing here is we start with the columns, we move them out of the viewport again, um, we move them back to zero um, to minus hundred uh, viewport height, 
all three of them. Um, it happens at the same time. Oh no, it doesn't happen at the same time. I also have a delay here. So at, um, the first one happens without a delay uh, in 0 0.6 seconds. The second one has a delay of 0 0.15 seconds. And the third one has a delay of 0 0.3 seconds. So same delay as before, but you can see um, the duration is much shorter. Before it was 1.3. Here I've used uh, 0 0.6 and I've also used a different easing. I've used um, in Expo because to go to preview mode and open it here because I want it to disappear faster. Uh, I can show you what happens if I choose um, out Expo as before. It will look a little bit strange. So fine. And now you can see it. It looks a little bit weird at the end when it takes so long to disappear. So actually we, we just choose the opposite. It's in Expo. Uh, so it starts slow and accelerates and uh, just gets out of the viewport, shoots out of the viewport actually. And then we turn back the text color to blue. Uh, we give it a delay, so because this time it should start at the end of this uh, of this animation. Uh, so this one takes 0 0.6. So uh, we give it a delay, delay of 0. Point, oops, 0 0.5, like this, and again a duration of 0 0.1 because it should happen very fast. Um, the same we do for this one, but we don't need that. We are not animating that, and. Yeah, here's the Lottie file. And now you can see before it was on 75%. Now um, we play it from 75% to 100% and uh, with a delay of 0 0.6. So actually almost at the end of um, this animation. So it has a delay of 0 0.3 and the du duration of 0 0.6 makes in total 0 0.9. Um, so this starts at 0 0.6. So the animation of this nav call is, I don't know, maybe somewhere here. <laughs> and that's where we um, want to start the, the uh, Lottie animation. And it takes, a, it takes 0 0.5 seconds. Yeah. Um, so the last thing that is happening here is that we are turning back the color of the um, logo. It's at 0 0.8. Uh, so um, even a little bit more delay, but again, a duration of 0 0.1 and we turn it back to its initial color, this light blue. And here at the end, um, the entire nav page, this one, um, we hide it again. So, uh, display none, that's it. Let's have a look again. Yep. You can see how the Lottie file plays. Fine. You can also see it works on mobile. Also fine. Okay, um, that's it for the navigation. I've showed you how to build the nav bar. I've showed you how to build the nav page and I have uh, you've learned uh, how to animate it um, and how to make it responsive. Uh, in the next video, we are going to build the um, hero. So stay tuned. And if you didn't subscribe yet, subscribe to the channel not to miss uh, any of the following videos. Thank you. Bye-bye.